if you're out there trying to do the best you can hitting those sales targets, generating more revenue, and really being successful in the field of sales, you're gonna wanna learn some tricks that can make you more effective. And this might be one of the most effective tricks you can use in the process. It's something that we unconsciously use sometimes, but being aware of its power and using it intentionally will make you so much more effective, whether you're in direct sales or you're actually just trying to improve your communication skills in general. It is a multidisciplinary trick, but effective so much when it comes to sales. But first, we have to start with a story. And with that, welcome back to the Selling With Love podcast. I'm your host, Jason Mark Campbell. If you're new to this, make sure you subscribe, like, and share this video if you find this extremely useful, if you are watching on YouTube, and of course, if you are listening to the audio experience, make sure to take a moment, leave a review for the podcast. It really helps us attract more listeners so we can continue sharing you some sales and entrepreneurship insight. So the first place we got to start before I share you what this magic is, is a story. And we've all been through this experience. I'm talking about a really, really bad sales experience. Imagine this, perhaps you're going out to buy a telephone and uh, I'm not going to call any company in this specificity. I'm just going to say a nice, smart telephone and imagine walking into the store and then a salesperson comes to you and says, Hey, are you looking to buy this device? And you're like, uh, well, I'm just looking around for now. And then they go into a monologue. Imagine just saying like, well, listen, what you should know about this telephone is they have a camera that has this many megapixel and then they have the storage space that's this much. The screen is this big and it actually also has this long lasting battery life and then it also has this microprocessor and then they keep going on and on and you're kind of feeling trapped because we're polite naturally and we don't want to just like tear down this person who's really going into what would be a feature vomit. A feature vomit is just them first thing talking about the product only, and they're just listing out features, which, you know, if you were scrolling online, you probably would have glanced at the features and specifications, but you probably don't pay attention to the entire set of specification because more than likely there's a specific way that you want to use your smart device. And there's only a few key features that might actually be worthwhile to you. And so if you've ever been into this experience, then first off, let's flip the script because if you have been in sales and you've been nervous in sales and maybe you just got started in sales, it seems like a great place to start. Maybe you read about the product and you feel very comfortable about all the product features. You might just be starting on the job and when you talk to the first person who walks out, you decide, I'm just gonna tell them everything about the product and hopefully they'll buy. It's not the most effective way to sell. Matter of fact, if, if this is the only way you thought you could sell, well, I'm hoping that what I'm about to share with you is really gonna help you change your perspective because product knowledge is an important thing. Don't get me wrong. You should know about the product that you're selling. But if you're having a conversation with a client that's coming to be interested in this product or service, you have to understand that product knowledge is going to be the baseline of what you need to know. Rather, what is much more important is for you to have client knowledge. Understanding what is the traditional client that's walking in. And matter of fact, getting so curious about who that client is. And if you have no information, we have to switch to asking questions. Now I've done some previous videos on how to be asking more powerful questions. And that's not the trick we're talking about here. But nonetheless, having an understanding of the client is going to be so much more effective. And there's one thing in common, at least from this point on in our history, that will be happening with every client that they come in. And that's the fact that they will be human, at least for now. And when humans come in, there's certain ways that we can communicate as humans to humans that makes it so much more effective. There's a neuroscientist called Dr. Paul Zak who did a very interesting study on how we respond to this one trick, which is storytelling. He did a study to see what would happen to our neurochemicals whenever we would be hearing a compelling story. And what was fascinating is that the neurochemicals of oxytocin started firing up in the brain. And this allowed us to form better connection and earn more trust with the person that was communicating the story with us. Now, if you're in the business of sales, building up trust and having a connection and showing empathy is a very powerful thing that you can transmute to the potential buyer. So understanding how you can use stories can be one of the most effective things that you can focus on to make you better at sales. 
And it's by no coincidence that I started this whole conversation with a story. See, when we hear a story, we're more likely to remember the facts that we're being told. If you think about what are the biggest empires today, they all have media at its core. You look at how much Hollywood can generate so many billions of dollars. You look at the video game industry, and it always has at its core for a successful film or a successful video game, you will have the power of storytelling being brilliant. We love a good story. We pick up books. We, we think of the classics. So when it comes to sales, can we use the same powers to help us hit our quota? And the answer is yes, absolutely. When you start going into storytelling, you get to have a much better connection and you can always use this to make the points you want to make. So if you've never actively looked into using storytelling in the way that you sell, I'm going to give you three specific stories that you can learn so that you can use whenever they come up. The first story that you should know is your why of selling what it is you're selling. Now, this is an interesting one because it's not necessarily one that you need to share with a potential client unless, you know, they're wondering, why are you so motivated? Why do you work here? But nonetheless, it's one of the most important stories you should know for yourself because you have to know why you're selling what it is that you're selling. I'll give you an example. When I think about why I'm doing Selling with Love, why did I go and write a book? Why do I keep creating this content? Is I had an experience in my early 20s where I bought into a program where by the end of it, they made a ton of promises and by the end of it, they broke all those promises and yet used my face as a testimonial before I found out that everything I was taught was a lie. And so I have a motivation to see a world where there's less douchebag marketers and salespeople that are taking advantage of people that are just trying to do their best. And if I can teach enough good businesses, good entrepreneurs, the ethical way of doing sales and running a business, then I know that they're going to take a bigger market share and they're going to get a chance to outcompete anyone who's trying to be manipulative and douchey. And so that's a bit of an origin story set in the shortest way possible. But nonetheless, if you know your motivation as to why you're selling what you're selling, it will not only be something that if you get asked to communicate that fact as to why you're being so adamant about selling this in an honest way, but every time you're going to show up to sell, whether it's doing your prospecting, getting on the phone, getting into an appointment and having that different energy as to why you show up, this is something you need to know for yourself. And so when you're clear on the impact, you know that you can show up and sell fully. So what's your story? And if you're not very attached to what you're selling, you might want to have some conversations with your manager, or perhaps you need to understand why it's so important for you to sell that's beyond just making a buck. If you have a bigger motivation than just making a buck, it will be communicated and felt by the people that are looking to buy from you. So what's your why story? What's your start story? What's your origin story? And when you know this, Keep it in mind and you'll realize there's various ways you can tell it, various lengths, but knowing it is a very powerful thing. All right. The second one is actually one of the most important you should know, which is a story of a past client that has had success, transformation, and results with whatever it is that you're selling. See, if you don't have that kind of story and you're speaking to a potential client, they might be wondering, well, how is this going to work for me? And the best way to communicate the benefits is to have a ready story of someone that has had that transformation with the product or service. If you're working in a large organization, you should be able to study case studies of people that have had success and you wanted to study as many different types of clients if you have that information available. For example, in my case, if somebody is going through my membership and someone's considering wanting to join, I can share the stories of an individual who started in the program and had no idea how to sell, were afraid to pick up the phone and thought that this was an evil thing and they were just trying to outsource it and not handle it at all. But after working together, teaching them the principles and especially the mindset and the belief systems you need to have when you go into sales, it made them so much more effective and it took some time to work together, but it does take time to change belief. And I was so excited that after working together for about six months, has started having consistent appointments, is excited about sharing themselves on social media, being able to make some content and get on sales calls, do webinars and not be afraid of doing so. So for any potential client who might feel that this is them, they just want to outsource this and I tell you, when you are the key person, you should be the one handling sales and you need to overcome these blocks it becomes so much more relatable than just telling someone to buy. 
A client transformation story is key. And again, if you're just getting started, talk to your past clients, gather this information. And I'll give you one more trick if maybe you're at the very beginning and you don't have these stories yet, then look into similar industries, similar products, or perhaps mentors, coaches that you have who have practiced a similar method or a product that has created a similar transformation and use that as a reference. So for example, I could say, if you've ever struggled with sales and this is not something you felt comfortable with, there's a lot of trainers out there who have worked with individuals that are just like you. For example, I was working with Grant Cardone. Now I'm quoting Grant Cardone necessarily to advocate for his work, but it's a name that's more familiar in the sales world. But I could say something around the lines that Grant Cardone's, there was this video I saw where he worked particularly with somebody where they had some struggles around sales. They didn't want to do it, but with the methods that he taught, you could see that there was a big transformation. And in your case, we could do something similar. I want to create a program that's even better than that. And we'll make sure that I can take you step by step and have you overcome these blocks. Again, borrowing a story if you don't have your own, but if you don't have any stories for your own about transformations you've created for people, that might become your number one priority. Whether you're doing it for free or for paid, you need to create these stories as soon as possible because that'll build your confidence and you'll be able to share the story to the clients that you speak with. And then finally, that brings me to the third type of story that you should be building over time, which is objection stories. Whenever there's objections that happen, you should be able to come up with nice stories that can actually overcome these types of objections. I'll give you an example. If somebody says, well, I need to think about it and maybe I'll get back to you tomorrow. And assuming that you really want to make sure that there's at least some action that is taken that moment on the phone right there, you always agree first. So you say, absolutely, you should definitely take the time to think about it. But I want to tell you, I've had a chance where I was looking to buy a house and there's nothing I regretted more in the world than actually looking for the perfect home and I decided to sleep on it. I didn't put any kind of deposit even though I knew it was refundable. And the next day somebody came in and they actually put in an offer and it was too late for me and I couldn't be so much more disappointed because I kicked myself in the butt. There was not even any risk. It was a pending inspection offer that I could have put in the house so at least I would have been with everybody else. Now. I'm not saying that you can't wait till tomorrow to make this decision, but I, what I would suggest is because we only have five spots for this and I'm going to be on the phone with a lot of other people today, at least take an action and put in a deposit so you have the time to think about it. And then from there, let's have a follow-up conversation to see if it's still right for you, but at least you'll know you'll secure one of those spots. So you see, it's an objection of a similar story that has the point that feels the pain, but you bring it back to the action that you wanna take. For each and every major objection that usually comes up, you should be able to have a powerful story that can reframe people into making that action if it has to be done now, or that at least makes them reframe whatever objection they have. If it costs too much, the obvious objection that usually comes here is says, I understand it's a very expensive product, but you also have to know it's a very powerful product. I don't know if you've ever been out and trying to shop or cut corners and get the cheapest thing and the first thing you realize, it breaks really, really fast. I mean, I was creating a ton of content and I bought one of these arms which actually held my microphone. And I saw one that was really cheap, I bought it. But then every time I got on video, I got frustrated because I looked at it, it didn't look as cool as the really nice one that I knew is really what I wanted. And then it started breaking and then I started regretting and eventually I went to buy the good one anyway. So I actually just wasted my money on the cheap one to eventually get exactly what I wanted. So if you're looking to solve this problem and you want it to be done once and for all with the right product that's really gonna do it, that's why my product is at the price that it is and we wanna focus on making sure it's the only product you'll ever have to buy to solve that problem. So once again, three powerful stories that you can use and the key here is actually to start building your storybook. This is actually a key component of your sales books. Like what are all the stories that you can practice, you can rehearse, you can role play on all the common objections that usually come in a sales conversation. And if you can start building up on these stories, you can always make points and continue using stories to make sure that it builds on trust and it really gets people to move into action. Selling is a sport. It's something you need to train, it's something that you need to develop, and we can all learn it. And with this little trick, you're gonna see that you're gonna be able to hit your quotas much more effectively than just doing you know, the feature vomiting that we talked about at the beginning. But be kind, be forgiving on yourself. And if you see a struggling salesperson that might be just feature vomiting on you, they might just be earlier on the path. You can always nudge them and say, 
hey, maybe you should subscribe to that channel called Selling with Love. Thank you all for tuning in. Go out there, keep selling with love. And again, if you take the time to like, subscribe, and leave a review if you're listening to this on the podcast, it really supports the channel. And we're gonna try to bring the best content for you to go out there and make the impact that you need.